please put your hands on your hips, everyone. Makes you feel good, right? That was the best tip that I got out of my favorite TED talk. This is a power pose and it helps us build hormones in our body that make us more confident. I've used it many times in my work life and today I want to share another tip with you. Actually, something that I think is the most important thing that you can do to succeed, no matter what you want to achieve. We can relax now. <laughs> the most important thing you can do to succeed is to get yourself a wing woman or a wing man. My first wing woman was Julie, and Julie was really tough. We worked together, and at the same time, she traveled to the US to do an MBA at the University of Chicago. You all do business degrees, right? So you probably have heard of that school. I met Julie at my first workplace, and in the first week, she took me aside, she took me into her office, she closed the door, and she said, Valerie, we have to talk about mistakes. I was really shocked. I had worked so hard, like what mistakes had I made? And what she said really surprised me, because she said, Valerie, I've made mistakes in my life that I don't want you to make. And the biggest mistake was this. I thought it would be enough to just be the busy bee, somebody who puts their head down, doesn't annoy anyone, works really hard, and someday somebody's going to notice how great I am and open the doors for me into the rooms where you actually call the shots. But that's not how it works. So I'm going to give you some tips for how you get into the rooms of power. I've done everything Julie told me, and when I step into the rooms of power, I sometimes feel really lonely, because there's nobody who looks like me. There are very few women, and even more importantly, there are very few young people. I'm always the youngest, by decades. The rooms of power where we decide about millions and billions how they're being spent, where we take so important decisions about the future, do not welcome or currently hold the future generations who actually have to live in that future. If you look around, the average age of the cabinet, of the government cabinet in this country is 50. In the business world, if you look at the leaders of the DAX companies, of the FTSE 100 companies, the average age is 55. And that sometimes means that for people like me and for you, uh, it can be quite tough. I've been told in these meetings that I shouldn't be there, or as one person once put it, look, just face it, there's no space for young female rockets like you who just shoot up and think they can change the world. What do you do in these situations? I'm going to be honest, this can be really hurtful. Most of us, when we face challenges at work, we call somebody who's really close to us, like our mom or our dad or close friends, but the reality is that those people are often not the ones who are best placed to help us. I don't know about you, but my mom doesn't really know how I can deal with sexism or all of the challenges that I face at work. She also doesn't really know how you negotiate or how you get a promotion or just in general how you navigate a work world where you just don't stay in the same job for your whole life. So for all of these situations, for anything that I am concerned about at work, any challenge I face, I have my own army of wing women and wing men. Wing women and wingmen are people who are dedicated to help you succeed. They are people who are by your side, and no matter what challenge work life throws at you, they will help you through it. We actually call each other wing women and wingmen, and we play by three rules. The first one is that you share your tips and hacks, and also the mistakes that you've made so that the other people don't have to make the same ones. Julie has done that for me. Our second wing woman rule is this, that we are committed to lifting each other up. One of my favorite and best wing women is somebody who helps me do that all the time. We do that to each other, we lift each other up. I actually met her at one of the most boring conferences that we had been to, and at some point I decided I should probably leave, so I looked left and right to plan my escape route, and I saw her two seats away from me. And I looked at her, and she looked at me. I rolled my eyes, she rolled her eyes. We understood each other. She leaned over and said to me, I think I'm going to go now. And to that I replied, yeah, I think me too. I'm actually driving to the airport in case you need a ride. And she did. So we got into the car, and I learned that she was the bravest person that I know by now. 
She is smart and pretty and intelligent. She is a great entrepreneur. She also works on digitalization and tech like I do. And she also speaks a lot at events. So I could have had the choice of actually seeing her as a competitor, or we would agree to being each other's wing women and support each other and thereby be more successful together. And we make sure that we are not just the busy bees who nobody sees. So when we have successes, we share them on social media so that more people find out about each other's successes. We help each other get speaking engagements or media interviews. And when we get into the power rooms, we help each other get what we want. So we've been in some rooms together where we had to convince politicians and investors to support our businesses. And beforehand, what we would do is we would meet in the bathroom. And ladies, the one benefit of being the only woman is that the bathroom is a great place to talk in private. So we met there and we talked about each other's strategies, what we wanted to get out of the meeting, what we might say when. And when the meeting started, she said her point, she made her point, and I picked it up and said, I think this is a really good idea for all of those reasons. And that way she actually got what she wanted. But there's a third wing woman rule, and that is actually a rule that I learned from one of my wingmen. And it was in a moment when I went through a very dark valley of fear and failure. So you might have heard that failure is a good thing, that is important for innovation, for success, and it's totally true. But when it happens to you, it can really suck. And I do a lot of, um, or I, what I do is I build a lot of funds, uh, funds that give money to people who have an idea for how to make the world a better place. And some of these funds work out, and sometimes some of these funds don't. And there was one that I had poured my heart and soul into. I'd spent years preparing it, and it didn't work. And in that moment, I went through this dark valley of failure where you try to get out, but you face a lot of your fears. And I was afraid of so many things. I was afraid that I had made wrong choices. I was afraid that I might not have been as good enough as I thought. I was afraid that other people might think that I'm a loser and would never, ever want to work with me again. And I was afraid that I would never, ever be successful in my life again. And I knew all of these fears were so irrational and at the start, when I could only talk about them with my husband and some really close friends, I just couldn't get them out of my body. They were in my system, and for months, they really dragged me down and pained me. And I got to a point when I understood that I could only get rid of it if I found a wingman or a wingwoman who could actually help me with their experience to get through it. So I thought about who I could ask, and I asked one of the investors that I know. And, like, do you know these people who just have this aura of self-confidence and, like, knowing things? Like, he is one of them. And he has this gift of making everybody who he meets feel like they can change the world and do anything they want. So I arranged to meet with him. I met him. I took all my courage together, and I told him how much I was struggling. And I asked him if he had some tips for me because he had invested in so many startups over decades. Startups fail, so he must have some tips that he gives to the entrepreneurs who failed with their venture. And he was a bit surprised. He promised me he would get back to me. And you won't believe how many times that evening I refreshed my inbox, and the next morning I refreshed my inbox, because I really, really desperately needed his help. And when his email came, I opened it, and he didn't have any tips for me. What he had done was something so much more powerful. He had told me what he was afraid of, and in what moments he felt like he wasn't good enough. And that, it released this pain that I had carried around for months, because he did what the third wing woman ruler, wingman rule is. He was open about him also struggling with things. And the reason why this is so important is because so many of us, we go through life thinking that the people that we admire, the people who seem successful, the people you see on magazines, who are on 40 under 40 lists, or might give a TED talk, that somehow they don't feel the same worries and insecurities and struggles that you face every day. But the reality is that all of the people who are successful feel exactly the same. They might not always talk about it or tweet about it, but they do. And the success that they have is never their success alone. You are never successful by yourself. But success is always things to the help of so many people. 
And that's why it's so important that you, if you want to be successful with whatever you want to aim for in life, have wing women and wing men by your side. So I'm gonna give you an exercise to find your wing women and wing men, because maybe you, you don't have them yet. And it's a super simple one, everybody can do it starting tomorrow. The exercise is this. Tomorrow, you're gonna think about a person who inspires you, who gives you energy, who you would like to spend half an hour with. And that can be somebody in your organization, it can be somebody who you met at another workplace, it can also be somebody you meet today here at TED. And if you really, really struggle to find somebody, then you just Google for an event, you search for an event where people come who share your interests. So I, for example, go to events called Global Digital Women Events because there I meet other women who are also excited about technology and digitalization. So you have your name on your list, and then the next thing you do is that you ask them to go for coffee. People love that. If you say, I think what you do is so interesting, can we go for coffee? They will definitely say yes. And when you meet them, the way that you get them to be your wing woman or wingman is by doing this. You start being their wing woman or their wingman. Share some tips that you've learned today or that have really helped you in your work life. Ask them what they want to achieve next and offer them to help and to lift them up. And maybe not in the first coffee meeting, but afterwards, you share something that you might be struggling with, something that you might be afraid of. And people love that because we, because we talk about that so rarely. And I promise you, nine out of 10 people will start being your wing woman and your wing man. That's because you all have this secret power weapon inside of you that you might not be aware of, but everyone has that. And that power weapon is generosity and kindness. Generosity and kindness is our most powerful and most undervalued tool for success. We should have so much more generosity and kindness in our workplaces. And the generosity and kindness will not just be important for your wing woman and wingmen, but it will have this, tr this kind of trickle down, triple effect. It will start the change that we should see in the workplace and in the world. So what I do with my teams is that sometimes I take them into the room, I close the door and I say to them, look, we need to talk about mistakes. And then some of them get really scared and think that they've done something wrong. And then I say to them, look, a lot of us make mistakes and I don't want you to make that same mistake. And the most important mistake you need to avoid is that you are not just the busy bee. You can't just put your head down and do really, really, work really, really hard and hope that someday somebody's going to notice how good you are and open the doors to the rooms of power. But there are some tips and tricks I'm going to share with you so that you can get into the room and call the shots. And after I do that, what often happens is that a few days later, I can overhear some of my team members in the kitchen when they talk to somebody else there and they say, look, I actually want to share with you, like, you shouldn't just be the busy bee, right? There are some mistakes that people make, and here are some tips for how you can get around that. And once I actually heard two women talk about this, and then one said to the other, look, we're going to make a pact. Us two, we are not just going to be the busy bees. You and me, we're going to be queen bees. I had never thought about that, but yeah. You should go out and be queen bees. You should go out and be young or older or male or female rockets that shoot through the sky and change the world. And when you do that, you need to be tough and you need to be brave, but you also need to be kind and generous. Because there's so much potential in each and every single one of you, in everyone who's watching this, and the world needs exactly that. They need you to unleash this potential. And when you do that, you will succeed, you will fail, but you must persevere where others falter. And the one thing you must never do is to let the future out of your hands and let other people shape it. You need to take the future into your own hands and shape it and make it your own. And for the moments when things get really tough and rough, just make sure that you have some wing woman or wingman by your side.